Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In this series of videos, we're gonna cover the process of deep faking and kind of demystify it, cover the process both from a hardware aspect and also a software aspect, talk about what type of footage you need that's going to set you up for success, not only from the destination character you want to put onto the footage, but also choosing and extracting and picking out good movie footage and what things may or may not work. From there, we're gonna talk about the software process in Deep Face Lab on analyzing the faces, doing the training that actually is using the AI craziness to create the character on both ends. And then we dig into the process of creating a cutout for that footage that you're later going to use in the compositing package to take your original footage, cut out the destination face, put it on, and then finesse it in your compositing application of choice to make it really blend in seamlessly, and then have a final deep fake that replaces the character the way that you see on the internet. So, Hopefully you're excited about this process. It does take some learning, but once you get it down, it's a very nice and efficient process. And here we go. One thing to keep in mind in using Deepface Lab is that as of version two, is that it does require an NVIDIA graphics card. But that doesn't mean you have to jump straight up to a Quattro line card or a Titan line card in order to get good results or have the results go pretty fast. You're probably going to get bang for buck wise, just as good, if not better results, just using a GeForce line card. Now the big difference and one thing you do want to keep in mind is the amount of VRAM or video RAM that the graphics card does have. And so if we look at the amount of VRAM that's required and the quality you can get and just the evolution of Deepface Lab in general. When it was first released, this was the resolution of the images that it was generating, 64 by 64 pixels. As it's developed and as graphics cards have developed, you can generate larger and larger faces to where now, if you have say something like an 11 gigabyte graphics card that can compute that, you can get faces this big and this clean. And obviously that's a huge development from here, but you don't need to have an 11 gigabyte super high end graphics card in order to get good results. So say you have a 10 series card, a nine series card or whatever, it might take you longer to compute something that looks this clean, but you're going to get there. The downside is the size of the image may be limited by the amount of RAM you have on the graphics card. So just for an example, I'm rendering most of the deep fakes that we are doing on as art on 1080 Founders Edition cards, which have eight gigabytes of RAM. We're getting a resolution about 256. So we're somewhere in between here and here. And if you're doing your compositing and your post-production well, you can get pretty darn good results. It just might take a little bit longer to compute. For all the software and downloads you're going to need, I will try and include links in the description. But one of the main software applications, of course, you're going to need is Deepface Lab. So go ahead and if you don't want to use a link, do a Google search for Deepface Lab. Probably the first option that's going to show is GitHub. Go ahead and click on that. And you always have access to the source code that you can download and compile on your own. But if you scroll down about three fourths of the way, you're going to get to the actual downloads where you can grab them yourself. So if you want to use a BitTorrent client, you can use a magnet link to grab that. Or if you want to make it a little bit more simple, just a straight download. And you have to have a mega account for this, which is free to sign up for. Go and click on that. And that will open a window with all of the previous and newest releases. So as of this point in time that I'm recording this, 8.2.2020 is the newest version. The cool thing is you always have access to the newest build. Once you're done downloading the version of Deepface Lab you intend to use, just go and double click the .exe file. You'll get a pop-up that's gonna ask you where you wanna extract it to. Go ahead and click on extract. And they're gonna be waiting a little bit, but it's going to extract all the files. And there's a lot of small files in there, so it takes a little bit longer. And we're gonna revisit this a little bit later on down the road. So one thing that's going to greatly and directly impact the quality of your deep fake is going to be the quality of your source and destination video. For deep fakes, you're probably not gonna to want to use anything below 1080p or 1920 by 1080. Even YouTube or something like that isn't the ideal place because because even if it's 1080p, that footage tends to be pretty compressed. That doesn't mean it can't work, it just means the work involved and the quality of your results might be a little bit less. But if you want to grab stuff offline at the highest quality you can, go out and download 4K Video Downloader. That tends to work really well in getting the footage off of something like YouTube. Once you have 4K Video Downloader installed, it's really easy to use. You just go to the YouTube site or whatever it might be. In this case, this is another one of the Azar deepfakes we had done. Just go ahead and copy the URL and then click on paste link. It is overall a great way to grab footage off of YouTube and other video sites. Better yet, if you happen to have a Blu-ray of the movie you're wanting to use, 
that is probably an ideal case scenario. It's not 4K, but it's not compressed like you would get online. And in order to get the video off that, you're going to use a program called Make MKV. It works great for these purposes. Now, when you grab an MKV, that's not easily editable in something like Adobe After Effects or DaVinci Resolve or anything like that. So once you take the MKV, the raw, uncompressed version of that Blu-ray file of the main movie, you're gonna then want to head over and bring it into Handbrake, and that's where you can compress or extract out just the chapters of the movie that you're interested in and also make it in a more editing friendly format. Now, as far as MKV, I have a disc opened up right here. And once you open the disc, this is what the look you get. So basically it's going to give you the options for everything on the disc. And typically what you're gonna to wanna to look for is the largest file. So this is 19.8 gigabytes. Typically the, the main feature of the main movie tends to be somewhere between 15 and even 30 if it's a really long movie. So I'm gonna go ahead, right click and say unselect all. I'm just gonna choose the main feature, which in this case is Book of Eli. And if you want the actual surround sound, you can go in and choose what versions that you want. I don't really need subtitles in this case. And then you would just tell it where you want to extract the disc to, and you'll click Make MKV, and it's gonna go ahead and go about its business of reading from the disc drive and extracting it to whatever location you find. But once it's done, you should be set to go. All right, so Make MKV finished extracting the file, and now we need to go ahead and move over into Handbrake to make it a editing friendly format, I guess you would say. Now, this is funny, in the last step, I was using Book of Eli, didn't work that well because the screen recording wasn't working, so now I'm dropping in Anchorman, a completely different type of epic, but you can see once you drag something into Handbrake, it reads the file and it also reads the chapter. So if I know I only want clips from chapter six, and I have no idea what chapter six is, so I'm just completely winging it right now. But say I only want to capture chapter six or maybe chapter six and chapter seven, maybe that's the action part of the movie or the dialogue that I want to replace the actor with. I'll, I'll, I'll only select that. I'm gonna go over to the video tab and where it says preset fast 1080p 30, that's fine since we're working with 1080p footage, but I want to keep the frame rate the same. So I'm gonna to go to this drop down and choose same as source. So if it's 24 frames a second, which most movies are, or 23, 90, whatever it might be, it's going to keep that frame rate the same. And if you're using Deep Face Lab, the likelihood is you have an NVIDIA graphics card. In the newer versions of Handbrake, they've incorporated NVIDIA graphics card acceleration for encoding. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose H.264. NVIDIA NVENC or NVIDIA Encoder. And I think the quality setting is fine. You could pump this up higher if you wanted to get less compression. But then I'm gonna go ahead and click on Start and it's only going to encode those couple chapters. And the likelihood is it's going to encode much more quickly than it would on the CPU. And just to show what the graphics card is contributing here is the CPU is being maxed out here. So my 6700K is being maxed out, but you can also see that the main graphics card is being used to encode things as well. So it is contributing to the process. So you are still gonna be bound by your CPU a little bit, but it's nice that we're getting a nice boost from the GPU as well. All right, so that handbrake encode has finished. If I go ahead and double click, we can see this is going to play back perfectly. And also if we go ahead and open something like Premiere that we wanted to edit in, we can see that we can go ahead and scrub and edit in here as well. So we've gone from a Blu-ray, extracted that to an MKV file and converted it to an editable format that an editor and DeepFace Lab has access to. So now that you're at a point where you can actually start picking out the footage and editing the footage you want to use for your deep fakes, choosing the right type of footage is going to be really important. So first off, you want to get the entire range of emotions. And the software has a really hard time with sides of faces and lower angles since they don't tend to be revealed in footage quite as often. And while you might think movie footage would be great, like Blu-rays, they tend to be very dramatically lit. So actual interview footage tends to be very much more evenly lit but they don't always have that huge range of emotion for the acting, so you need to try and find a mix of the two. Now, when it comes to the actual footage you're wanting to put the new face on, you're a little bit more limited by the actual footage, but there are still some good choices you can make. You can get away with slight special effects, but if there's effects where there's like laser beams or something coming out of the character's eyes, that's clearly not going to be able to track the faces very well or train the faces as to what it actually usually looks like. So those are the type of considerations you need to take into account when you're actually choosing the destination footage that you're wanting to put the face onto. Now, when you're trying to decide how much source footage you need of the face, 
face, the destination face that you're wanting to put onto the movie or TV show or whatever footage it is. It kind of depends. It depends on the complexity of the acting and what you're able to find. We've typically gathered and edited down to just the edits of the character somewhere between around a 7 and 12 minutes of footage and that tends to be a little bit more than we need but at a later point in a later video in the series we're going to talk about how you're going to whittle that down once you've converted all that to images so you get rid of any blurry images or less than ideal images so you want to start off with an edit of the footage that's a little bit more and that way you have some wiggle room as far as editing it down to exactly what you want to use. So this is going to wrap up our very first introductory video to deep faking. Even if you don't watch the other videos and you just wanted a general idea and insight into the process, hopefully that's given you that. Hopefully more than anything, this has given you a little bit of urging or desire to try and go through this process. And if that's the case, go ahead and watch the rest of the series of videos as they're released. And hopefully we'll be getting you up in deep faking soon. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next Johnny How To. 